the topic is grid from oral radiology so now what is grid so it is a series of lead strips which is separated by the x-ray transparent spacer so this is the grid so these are the series of the lead strips and they are separated by this transparent x-ray transparent spacers so they are the most effective way of removing the scattered radiation or the secondary radiation from a large radiographic field now what is scattered radiation so now this is the diagram for it so this is the anode that is this target so when the electron it hits this target there is production of this x-ray beam so when this x-ray beam it hits the object so after that there is production of scattered radiation and primary radiation so these are the primary radiation which are useful radiation that like when it falls on the film it produces the radiographic image but this scattered radiations they are not useful and this grids it helps in removing the scattered radiations so this grids it was given by Dr. Gatsev Bucky in 1913. So it is placed between the object and the film. So these are the grids. So this is the diagram for it. So when are the, when the radiations, so when the X-ray beam it falls on the object, so there is production of the scattered radiations and there is production of this primary radiation. So these grids, what they do is now there are these lead strips which are present in these grids. So they are so this grid it is placed between the object and the film. So this grid what it does is so this lead strip it absorbs this scattered radiation and only the primary radiation it falls on the film and because of that the like image the image quality is improved. So this is nothing but the grid it is placed between the object and the film. Now what are the types of grids? So there is stationary and moving. So stationary is it is stable. So these grids they are stable hence it is known as stationary. So the stationary grids, they are built in the tube side of the cassette and the, another one is the moving. So moving is as the name says, so this grid, it is moving, it is not stationary. So it was given by Dr. Holy Potter in 1920 and hence this type of moving grid, it is known as Potter Bucky grids because of the Bucky and the Potter. So it is known as Potter Bucky grids and the grids, they are moved to blur out the shadows which are caused by the lid strips. So now these grids, they are placed between the film and the object. So there are the shadow of these lids on the film. And to reduce that, the moving grids they are used. So mostly they are moving like three to five centimeter back and forth throughout the exposure. So it starts moving when the anode, it starts revolving. So this is nothing but the moving type of grid. Now what is the advantage of this grid? So the advantage of the grid is they eliminate the grid lines. So now on this image, as I said, there is a shadow of this lead strips. So this moving grid, it eliminates that shadow of this lead. The disadvantages is they are costly. So this moving grids, they are costly. So this is the disadvantage. The next disadvantage is they put a limit on the minimum exposure time because they move very slowly and hence the patient's radiation exposure time is increased. So as they are moving very slowly and hence because of that the patient's radiation exposure is increased and the next one is it may vibrate the x-ray table so as it is moving so it can vibrate the x-ray table so these is so these are all the disadvantage for the moving grids now there are another types of grids that are parallel and focused so now what is exactly focused so now focused is, so they are the grid which are made up of lead strips that are slightly angled so that they are fo so that they focus in space. So this is a type of focused. So in that now you have linear and crossed. Linear one is when the lead strips, so in this the lead strips they are parallel to each other in the longitudinal axis and these grids they allow the angle of the x-ray tube along the length of the grid without the loss of primary radiation from the grid cutoff now what is this grid cutoff so this linear it prevents the loss of primary radiation because of this grid cutoff so this grid cutoff is nothing but there is this loss of primary radiation now exactly we want this primary radiation only but because of this grid cutoff this primary radiation they are lost and it occurs when the images of the lead strips they are projected wider than they would be on the ordinary magnification so this is the cutoff now you will see now in this case the image which is produced on the film because of this grid it is much wider this is a result of a poor geometric relationship between the primary radiation and the lead strips so this is nothing but the grid cutoff so grid cutoff it is complete and there is no primary radiation which reaches the film 
so if the grid cutoff it is complete in that case the primary radiation it won't reach the film and it is so when the projected image of the led strips they are thicker than the width of the interspace so now we know so this is the led strips so this led strips they are present between this spaces if this led strips they are wider than the interspaces then there is complete cut off it means that there is no like no primary radiation it will reach the film so this is nothing but cut off i am just telling you about it in brief actually you don't need to write what exactly grid cut off is it's just i'm telling you for your information so this is nothing but the linear linear type of grids so in this this grids they can only be used effectively with very small x ray fields or if there is long target grid distance so if the target and the grid distance is long in that case only you, you can use this linear type of grid now what is cross so cross is a cross grid it is made up of two superimposed linear grids at right angle so this is superimposed linear grids at the right angle to each other and they have the same focusing distance so the disadvantage is so it cannot be used with oblique techniques which are which requires angulation of the x ray tube so this is nothing but the crossed now in that you have this two terms three terms which are related that is the convergent line convergent point and the focal distance now what is this convergent line so the line it is fo line focus grids they converge at a line in space so this is known as convergent line and when the cross so this cross types of grid they converge in a point so they converge and they meet in a point in this space and this is known as convergence so this point is known as convergent point in the case of cross grids and if it is in for the linear then it is known as convergent line so the lines which are focused and they converge at a line so they'll go and they're they're converging at a line that is known as convergent line now what is this focal distance so focal distance it is a perpendicular distance between the grid and this focal spot and or the line so this is nothing but the focal distance focal distance which you can see in the case of focused but now in the case of parallel as so this is the parallel so in this as we have seen the led strips they are parallel when they are viewed in the cross section in this we have seen the grids they are made up of led strips that are slightly angled so in this the led strips they are parallel and in this they are angulated so this is known as focused and the parallel one is this one so the led strips they are parallel when they are viewed in cross section but in this they are focused at infinity so they do not have any convergent line now as these are parallel so they are not going to meet at any point because of the parallelism and because of that they are focused at infinity and this is about the parallel focused stationary and moving now moving on towards the grid ratio now what is this grid ratio so the grid ratio is the ratio between this height of the led strip and the distance between them so as we know there are these led strips which are present in your grids so between these led strips there is this transparent spacer which is present so why this is the transparent spacer and this black ones are your led strips so grid ratio is the ratio between the height of this led strips and the distance between two of them so basically it's like they are zero point so the led strips they are 0.05 mm thick and the interspaces they are much thicker than the led strips so in this your grids they are like thinner than the interspaces so now you can see the interspaces they are much wider than your led strip itself so the led so the grid ratio it ranges from 4:1 to 1 to 16:1 to 1. so usually 8:1 to 1 type of grid ratio it is used when it so when it is below 90 kilovolts peak so 12 is to 1 it is used when the kilo voltage peak it is above 90 so now this is just a zest of what exactly we have studied till now so now as we have seen so there are many scattered radiations which like arises when the x ray beam it hits the patient and they are multidirectional so only those rays which are traveling in the direction of the transparent spacer they can reach the film whereas those that are scattered at different angles they are absorbed by the grid so this is nothing but the grid so this is your grid so this are your led strips the darker one and between that it is your transparent spacer so the radiation so the radiation which passes from this transparent spacer it will hit this film and the scattered one it will be absorbed by this led strips that is your grid So the last point of this grids is the grids assessment. So.
the following factors it must be taken into consideration when you're evaluating the grid so first factor that is to be considered is the primary transmission for the assessment of the grid now what is this primary transmission so it is a measurement of the percentage of the primary radiation which is transmitted through the grid so this is nothing but the primary transmission it is nothing but the measurement of the percentage measurement of the percentage of the primary radiation which is transmitted through this grid so the primary radiation that is transmitted through this grid is the primary transmission factor to be considered for the grid's assessment is the bucky factor so it is the ratio of the incident radiation which is following on the grid to the transmitted radiation which is passing through the grid so it is nothing but the ratio of the incident radiation which is following on this grid to the radiation which is passing through this grid so this is nothing but a bucky factor it indicates absorption of both primary and secondary radiation so the high grid ratio it absorbs more scattered radiation and it has larger bucky factor than the low grid ratio so if the grid ratio is high so it absorbs more scattered radiation so if we have seen now what exactly the grid ratio was so if the grid ratio is higher then it will absorb more of the scattered radiation and if it is so, so if the grid ratio is less so it will it will comparatively absorb less scattered radiation so the formula for your bucky factor is bucky factor is incident radiation upon the transmitted radiation so this is nothing but the bucky factor the last factor to be considered is the contrast improvement factor so it is the ratio of the contrast with the grids to the contrast without grids so it is nothing but the ratio of the contrast with grids upon contrast without grids so this is nothing but the contrast improvement factor and this was all about the grids and this is what you need to write in your answers so that was it for this video thank you so much